Let's predict the products for this double replacement reaction. Remember, it's going to be one of the two of these templates. Potassium iodide and sodium chloride are both salts, so we're dealing with example A here. So remember that potassium is going to come in and bump out sodium. So instead of sodium chloride, we'll have potassium chloride. And sodium comes and takes the place of where potassium was. So instead of potassium iodide, we'll have sodium iodide. And of course, we need to check our solubility guidelines. So the two compounds we'll be looking up will be potassium chloride and sodium iodide. Now you might even say to yourself, potassium and sodium. Well, aren't potassium and sodium compounds always soluble? Let's take a look. Potassium and sodium. These compounds are always soluble with no exceptions. So if you were to mix potassium iodide and sodium chloride, you wouldn't really have any reaction. Um, you're really not producing any precipitates here. What's happening is they're, all the ions are just kind of uh, moving around randomly within the beaker. So if the situation exists where you, where you have products and both products are aqueous, that simply means that there's no reaction. Now this may be somewhat challenging to understand on paper, but in the lab, when you carry out one of these reactions, um, you will of course notice nothing, and it will be evident that no reaction took place. Let's look at another double replacement reaction. Now this time, we're dealing with sodium hydroxides, and you know that hydroxides are oftentimes bases. And hydrochloric acid well, the name gives it away. We're dealing with an acid and a base, so we're talking about a neutralization reaction. And in a neutralization reaction, if you mix an acid and a base, you always make salt and water. What type of salt do you think we might make? Well, let's look at what we're dealing with here. We're dealing with sodium and hydrochloric acid. So sodium hydroxide is written like this. Hydrochloric acid, of course, is written like this. And it's still a double replacement reaction, so we're still going to have partners switching. So if, if, if Na comes in and bumps out H, instead of HCl, we'll have NaCl. And if the H goes to where the Na was, instead of NaOH, we'll have HOH. And you know that HOH is the same thing as H2O. So like always, both of our reactants are aqueous. But in this case, we're not going to use the solubility guidelines. Um, we'll just say that um, sodium chloride is aqueous. And water, if you're making molecular water, you know that water will just simply be a liquid. So this is another type of double replacement reaction.